let's establish what you mean by prophets. The word to prophesy can mean to tell forth or to foretell. In the sense of telling forth, every faithful preacher is a prophet. And yes, there are true prophets in that sense. Men who are bound to the Word of God, who like Martin Luther could say his conscience was bound to Scripture. Men who will stand for the Bible no matter what public opinion may say to the contrary. Men who will let the Bible speak to the situation that they are facing in their generation, in their town, or whatever. Yes, in that sense of telling forth God's truth on the authority of God's Word and applying it in the Savior's name to the consciences of men, there are true prophets. But mostly people think of prophets as those who are speaking by divine authority directly from God and usually with an emphasis on telling something about the future. Uh, nowadays, there are many churches in which people will get up to give a word of prophecy, a word of knowledge, a word of particular wisdom. And very often, it is claiming, when I would have to say in every case, it's claiming to be a direct communication from God of an authoritative nature. And by definition, it's usually something that is not specifically stated in Scripture. Uh, I have known of cases where preachers will give a word of prophecy regarding the giving of their people, regarding a building project, or regarding some scheme. I know of a case of a young man who questioned his pastor we, about these words of prophecy. We were getting prophecies as to what we ought to do. But what happened to the prophecies last month and the month before where we were told what we had to do, but now they're forgotten and we're on a new lane? Uh, and he was counted something of a troublemaker and a heretic for even asking that. In the sense of being immediate vehicles of divine authoritative revelation, there are no prophets today. My revelation is Scripture. If I have the Bible for what I'm saying to you, then I say it with authority. Anything else is my opinion. My opinion may be right. My opinion may be wrong. Your opinion may be right. Your opinion may be wrong. The Bible's not wrong. It's never wrong. So, a preacher may be a true prophet in the sense of representing what the Bible says. But anybody who comes to you to tell you he has a word from God that's not from Scripture, or a particular interpretation or application or sometimes a misappropriation of a statement of Scripture that's not addressed to you, but he said, that's what God has said to me for you, you've got to be very, very careful. You would need to get before the Lord and let the Lord take his word and by his Spirit instruct your heart. Every one of us has to come to decisions in life. Every one of us will want to know what is the leading of the Lord here. There are certain things that, and most things in life come under this category. There's no difficulty because they're covered by the great moral commands of Scripture. Most of our choices, at least many of them, have the component of being right or wrong, morally, spiritually, biblically, right or wrong. Well, the Bible gives you an answer to that. If any course of action is going to lead me into a defiance of or disobedience to the Word of God, then it is wrong. It is not the will of God. I have heard people say when they've been challenged about giving up an adulterous relationship, 
well, I, I love this person. Be that as it may, God says it's sin. Well, I'll have to pray about it. There's nothing to pray about except for repentance, forgiveness, and the grace to forsake all sin. There's nothing to pray about because the Bible has already said what the will of God is. Now, there are things in which we need to know the leading of the Lord. Uh, as a, a man, should I be a missionary, a minister, or civil engineer, a lawyer, school teacher, whatever? What's the will of God for my life? That's very personal. And that's where we come back to what Paul said in Romans 8, that every Christian has the indwelling Spirit of God. The indwelling Spirit of God leads the sons of God. Those who are God's people are led by the Spirit, Romans 8 verse 14. Now, in context, I have to say, the primary reference is not to that individual leading in each area of life, but I don't think it can be excluded. So when he's saying here that they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God, he's saying this is the privilege of God's people. If, according to Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, you will acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, you submit it all to the Lord. He will direct your paths. According to James chapter 1, if you lack wisdom, you ask of God, He will give you wisdom. Now, it's not necessarily a light from heaven. It's not... In fact, I would say it's uh, very, 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 very rare that you're going to find that. And people who get these beams of lights and uh, these, what they call revelations, are usually deluding themselves. But the Lord, if you ask for wisdom, guarantees to give it to you if you're submitted to Him, His leading, His will. So, this is how a Christian will come to know God's will, and he'll know it, because in accordance with his word, by that I mean it will not contradict anything in Scripture, will not lead to disobedience to the word of God. In accordance with his word, God will give such a conviction of heart. This is what I have to do. This is what I ought to do for the glory of God as to give you a freedom of conscience in doing it and a lack of such freedom if you were not to do it. But you come to that conclusion. That binds you. As far as you're convinced, it'll bind you to do or not to do. But it doesn't bind anybody else. For example, a young man comes to a church and says, I feel called of God to uh, go to the Congo as a missionary. The church will not be bound by his statement of his feeling that this is the way the Lord's leading them. The church will take that into consideration, but they will seek the Lord. They will examine the young man. They will examine the circumstances. And very, very often when people come saying they're led of God to do this or that, when church bodies look at them, they find they have none of the necessary evidences of people who are walking with God in such a way that they are qualified and trustworthy to go out into such a work. So you must seek the Lord's guidance in your life. When you feel you have that, fine. It may bind you, but it doesn't bind my conscience. I've got to look at it, uh, if it affects me in any way, in uh, the light of what I understand from the Word of God and from my investigation of you and your circumstances. So what I'm trying to make clear here is that, no, there are no prophets in the sense of people who have that charismatic gift of being able to speak directly from God with authority to other people. They are not with us. It's the Bible that does that, the Holy Spirit using the Bible and true prophets today are preachers who will preach the Bible and let the Holy Spirit apply it with authority to every man's heart.